Welcome to Turner Classic Movies. I'm Dave Carger. Tomorrow, April 4th, marks the official 100th anniversary of Warner Brothers Studios, which was launched on that day in 1923 by brothers Harry, Albert, Sam, and Jack Warner. It's a huge milestone and something that we're celebrating 24-7 during April here on TCM, with a lineup comprised entirely of films from that illustrious studio, which is part of our Warner Brothers Discovery family. To further mark the occasion, TCM has partnered with our good friends at the Film Foundation, the organization founded by Martin Scorsese and dedicated to film preservation, to remaster or restore 10 important Warner Brothers titles. We'll be showing all 10 of those restored prints this month. We began last night with 1932's One Way Passage, and we continue now with a 1931 drama from director William Wellman, starring Dorothy McHale and Donald Cook. It's Safe in Hell. As part of our showcase of these 10 titles here on TCM, we've asked some of our friends at the Film Foundation to host special introductions for us. For Safe in Hell, it's Alexander Payne, Academy Award-winning writer and director, and Film Foundation board member, who will do the honors. His observations will be followed by the film itself. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Alexander Payne. Thanks for joining me for director William Wellman's 1931 film, Safe in Hell. William A. Wellman was one of the most prolific and versatile directors of Hollywood's golden age. In a career spanning 40 years, roughly 1920 to 1960, Wellman directed 76 films, both silence and talkies, many of them masterworks of each genre he tackled. Himself a decorated veteran of World War I, Wellman went on to direct Battleground, the story of G.I. Joe, and of course, The Astonishing Wings, winner of the very first Oscar for Best Picture. In 1933, he made a terrific socially conscious Depression-era movie about youth called Wild Boys of the Road. And in 1937, he wrote and directed the first and still best version of A Star is Born. His was the sort of career contemporary directors can only fantasize about. And although the auteur theorists haven't been quite as kind to him as they've been to his peers, Ford, Capra, Weiler, and Hawks, for example, Wellman's films are suffused with energy, humor, violence, and poignancy, all highly personal to who he was as a man. Like one of his spiritual heirs, Sam Peckinpah, Wild Bill Wellman was known for a no-nonsense, two-fisted style, both on screen and off. But he also had a gentle, elegiac side, evident in such films as Goodbye My Lady, which made me cry as a kid and still does, and Westward the Women, a Western as deeply moving as it is muscular. In the early 1930s, as a contract director at Warner Brothers, the former fighter pilot experienced a second kind of boot camp, cranking out 18 feature films in only three years, and many have more than stood the test of time. One is The Public Enemy. Another is Night Nurse, one of five pictures he made with Barbara Stanwyck. And one of them is Safe in Hell, a deliciously sorted pre-code fallen woman story about a New Orleans hooker who kills a John and then goes on the lam to a Caribbean island filled with murderers and all manner of no-goodniks. Perhaps one reason this gem isn't better known today is that rather than starring a Barbara Stanwyck or a Betty Davis or a Miriam Hopkins at the beginning of her career, it stars an actress approaching the end of her own. British-born Dorothy McHale had come to New York at age 17 to dance in the Ziegfeld Follies. She started acting three years later and soon became a minor league leading lady with a hefty filmography straddling silence in the early years of sound. Oh boy, am I glad to be here. Lights, music, all I can drink. Let's make a lot of noise, everybody. Come on, let's make a lot of noise. Whoopee! Yet, as terrific as she was in movies like Safe in Hell, for some reason Warner Brothers dropped her contract in 1931. And then after fits and starts in B pictures, she disappeared from the screen entirely in 1937. Also notable in the film is the casting of Nina Mae McKinney, an extremely talented black actress and singer who had two years earlier starred in King Vieter's Hallelujah. Wellman was so impressed with her that he drummed up a musical number nowhere to be found in the screenplay. The only surviving 35 millimeter material of Safe in Hell is a nitrate print long forgotten in storage. 
So since its release, we've been able to see the movie only on poor quality 16 millimeter dupes. Now with the collaboration of Warner Brothers and the Film Foundation, Safe in Hell has been preserved from that single rediscovered archival print. For Turner Classic Movies and the Film Foundation, I'm Alexander Payne. Safe in Hell is one of many pre-code pictures that director William Wellman, known as Wild Bill, made while under contract at Warner Brothers. Pre-code refers, of course, to the period between 1930 and 1934, when Hollywood's censorship board had yet to start fully enforcing its rigid production code standards for movie content. Warner Brothers was known for its realism, especially in the pre-code era, and Wellman thrived at the helm of films like Safe in Hell, Night Nurse starring Barbara Stanwyck, and The Public Enemy with James Cagney, covering the taboo subjects of sex, crime, and addiction. Warner Brothers was also known for its speed in the 30s. As one writer put it, the characters in Warner Brothers films always seem to be running late, and the studio seemed to operate, quote, under the general principle that both their casts and their audiences were anxious to get on with it so that everybody could get to the track. The speed refers not only to the quick dialogue and length of the pictures, which often clocked in around 70 or 75 minutes, but also the length of the shoots. As director Alexander Payne mentioned in his intro before the movie, Wellman made 18 pictures in the space of three years, and apparently he loved every minute of it. Up next, the second half of tonight's double feature of William Wellman films made for Warner Brothers. It's another pre-code picture, this time dealing with drug addiction and starring Loretta Young, Richard Barthelmess, and Aline McMahon.